Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Today, we have two men who are good friends and who, and who have shaken up Genoa City over the years. Together, they have created a new lifestyle app called Billboard, and they're here to tell us all about it. Please welcome to the locker room, Daniel Goddard, who played Kane Ashby on YNR, and Brighton James, Devin Hamilton. Hey, guys. Hey, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Hey, of oh. course, the phone rings on cue. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin. We got interrupted for a minute. We did. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Thank you very much. All right, bye. Uh, I could even hear her, I think, because you had your earbuds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, one second. <laughs> Give us a moment. <laughs> you got you got a lot got to love live television. That's right. I, I got I got to tell you, if oh, I'm right now in my life, what I do, I'm a professional chainsaw juggler, but all the chainsaws don't have handles. <laughs> I think I'm either becoming very good at it or I'm really bad at it and I haven't cut my fingers off yet. It's one of the two. I haven't figured it out, but I'm, I'm getting don't, close to understanding it. Don't cut your fingers off. Um, we have a fan saying hello from Amsterdam. So um, I know fans were excited. We, we had rescheduled this, so they're all excited you're here today. Um, did you guys hit Thank it you, off first. when you first met at YNR? How, you know, did you become fast friends? It actually took us a while. I don't know how long were you on the show before we had our first conversation? Because I remember it was probably a year or two. And I remember a year, a year or two. Because I think when I was with Amber in the beginning, it didn't mean I didn't have storyline that interacted with you. And then once once I started having storyline with Lily, then we started having more um, more interaction. But I think that a defining moment in, in our friendship was Christoph Brighton and Crystal were in the uh, it's the school room, but it's also used for dialogue running if there's no kids in. And it's the end of the hallway where the hallway leads to the makeup room. And I don't know why, but I got this this bottle of arrowhead water, like a <laughs> like a half a five hundred mil bottle, and I put it in the hallway, probably about twenty feet away from like the entrance to the door of the room they were sitting in. And I lined it up like I was going to kick a field goal. And I <laughs> kicked the crap out of this thing. It somehow went straight through the door, hit the wall, bounced off the roof, and it landed perfectly upright poof, on, like on the – uh, what's that? It was like a magic trick. It was like a magic trick. And it, it like landed poof, perfectly upright on the table between everybody. And my I first, inst my first instinct was, "Holy crap! I've hit somebody! In I, I, I've hit Crystal in the head with a with a full bottle of water." <laughs> and when it didn't happen, I thought, "Maybe I'm meant to work with these guys." <laughs> and then after that, I think after I think that was even after. I remember we were, I was walking on set, and you were you were by yourself at the GCAC. I think it was the set, and, it, and lights were off still because they hadn't switched to, the, to that set, and you were running lines on your own. And I think I asked if you needed help running lines or something because I, you know, I like to, to to run with people. And then we started talking about Formula One. That's how I. Th that's that's really how he and I. Yeah, yeah. We're You're both, both big Formula One fans. Very, very cool. Um, do you both remember your first day at YNR? What it was like, and and if if you remember your screen test as well, if if you had to screen test. You know, I, I screen test. Uh, uh, I went and I tested for a role in One Life to Live in New York um, that Forbes March ended up getting. Um, oh, no, hang on, hang on. No, 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 I went and tested for As the World Turns as well. That was the one that led to YNR. As the World Turns, which Austin Peck ended up getting. And then... So for, you, you auditioned for Brad Snyder. That's who it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Michael, Michael Park's brother. Okay. And so I remember I auditioned for that, and then um, Austin got that. Um, ironically, you know, I wasn't that keen on moving and relocating to New York with my family because we were settled here. So I was pretty happy that, that um, Austin got it, but it led to um, coming to Weinar to, to meet for that. Uh, I didn't screen test on set. Yes, yeah, sir. 
I didn't screen test on set. Let me turn that off. I didn't screen test on set. I actually did it in the conference room um, with Adrian France um, and mm. executives, et cetera, there. But yeah, I do. That was, it was good. It was a good experience. It was fun. What about you, B? Mine, uh, I did, I had a three, three part audition process to get the role. I, I, I did the, just a, my first audition was with the casting director uh, at the time, Marnie Saida. And then I came back for a call back with the, uh, the executive producers and the head writer was Jack Smith at the time. And then I did a screen test. It was just down to me and two other guys. I did my screen test with Crystal though. And it was actually on set full, you know, full production. Uh, we did about three or four scenes. Um, and uh, I remember they were getting, getting pages and pages of, of these scenes. They were different than my, my initial uh, uh, audition pages. So they, I, I thought I was gonna have an easy time, but they sent me all these new pages. And I, uh, I remember Crystal had barely anything to say in the scene. She had like little, you know, one-liner comebacks. And she kept messing up during the screen test. So tell them an amazing story for two minutes. I'll be back, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait for the cut shot. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, what was crazy too about that when I when I went to this set for the first time for that screen test, I found out that day that the um, studio teacher for all the kids on the show, including Crystal at the time, was a woman named Linda Stone, who was my studio teacher on Family Matters. Um, and who had been oh, for wow. my entire time on the show. So from, from three years old till I was 11, it was her. And then I hadn't seen her since the show had ended. And so to find out that she was now on this show and to find out also Crystal, I had worked with Crystal. She did one episode of Family Matters uh, when we were kids. We were probably eight years old. And so to, to find out those things, it kind of felt like it was all meant to be. And, uh, and, and, yeah, and now she's cool. one of your best friends, right? She is my best friend. I'm the godfather yeah. to her son. And uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we couldn't be closer. And also my first day though, the first day on set, I, my, uh, once I got the part, I had about five scenes with just me and Eric Braden. And oh. I, don't, I, I didn't know, I remember the, the cast, the, our casting director walked me on the set that day and said, do you know who Eric Braden is? Do you know the character of Vic Newman? And I said, no, I, I, I really honestly wasn't familiar at all with it. And she said, oh, that's okay, just act like you do and show him some respect and you'll be fine. Probably, probably the best advice you were ever given. Best by far. <laughs> By far, but I, and also that first day taught me my the best lesson I'd ever learned, and any actor could ever learn, which is to listen. Because he, you know, I'm sure you've heard stories. You've been in, around, you know, soaps for a while. He, he's he's notorious for making, you know, the scenes and the dialogue his own, you know, and and taking the lines where he knows it should go because he knows the character and the story so well, and he's he's brilliant at it. So they let him do it, and uh, so from rehearsal to take, from rehearsal to take the scene would be a little different every time. And you'd really have to know not only your lines, but what the scene is about so that you could properly respond. And uh, it was, it was, it was a, a, a priceless lesson that, uh, that I love him for. <laughs> That's so funny. One of our friend, uh, fans, Kevin, said uh, he's been watching YNR since the diapers. Um, uh -huh. Daniel, you're on mute, but um, you both did many things uh, prior, like you just mentioned Family Matters, which I will get to, um, yeah, yeah. but so soaps are, are, you know, a bird all its own. I mean, were you uh, intimidated by the amount of dialogue and scripts you had to learn coming from the other mediums you did prior? Yeah. Um, when I did Beastmaster, we did, what, seven pages a day? Um, and on YNR, you end up doing 80, pa 80 pages a day. Wow. Soaps. Um, I remember when I first started, uh, I was really kind of overwhelmed by the by the load of volume. I mean, Brighton learned dialogue ridiculously fast. It, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, I have a different technique the way I learn my dialogue versus the way Brighton learns it. Um, and everyone's got techniques the way they learn their dialogue. I think that would be the more interesting story about you get a bunch of not saying this isn't, but like you get a bunch of actors and say, how do you learn dialogue and be a great acting book because. Uh, yeah. Long story short, um, I had so much dialogue and I was behind the bar at Indigo 
and I remember I had my script open. I'm like, because I'm from one camera show where I know where the camera is, I know what they can see. So as I'm mixing a drink, I look down, I pick something up, I'll be able to quickly get a glance and come back up. And it's perfectly natural. I mean, if you can make it work because no one just looks at someone like this and talks. Uh, that's what I was doing in the beginning, beginning in order to try and get my brain up to speed with metabolizing all the, the volume of work because it's, it's truly, it's crushing because we've had a lot of people who will come on the show who've been from, who come from prime time and they just crumble. They crumble. And not only do they crumble, they do one take, it's bought, and they go, they'll be like, bye, bye, moving. And they'll be like, what, that's it? I'm like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's yeah, it, it, it's crazy that, you know, they, it, you know, daytime work is schooling of itself, you know, like the, what you learn, you, you can do anything after daytime, not, yeah, not necessarily yeah, going I the do. other way. Yeah, well, I, I agree. But you know what's interesting about daytime is that it's a very giving medium because when when you work on a one camera show, whether it be a film or, or a primetime show and it's all single camera, meaning that they'll run one camera and that's what they're running, okay? Because you can't light from multiple camera angles because every setup is a whole lighting setup. So it's like we're looking this way, we'll light everything this way. And then once it's all done, so a dialogue scene would be, you know, you mean you talking, don't film me then they'll break and then they'll turn everything around and then relight this this way to get you, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not on camera. So you're feeding me my lines by your head's next to the camera. And you come across a lot of actors and you learn about actors very quickly, what sort of human beings they are, if they give you nothing. And we've got a scene where you're telling me that, you know, you're, you're leaving me or, you know, you're screwing me over a business or whatever the storyline is, and I, all I can really give you back is what you give me. So if you're one of these actors that just sits there and goes, I don't love you anymore. The problem is, is that I just don't. I'm, <laughs> my instinct is to go, can you read, say it a little, little more like you mean it? You know? Yeah. Because when you watch a TV show, literally, it's, it's the best of everybody's cuts all cut together. So it looks like they're talking to each other, but they're not really. They're just kind of like running lines. But daytime, you've got every camera running at once. Yeah. So when you have a scene between two people having an emotional breakdown, they're being filmed, they're being filmed, and that's being filmed. So you get a very genuine and honest performance, which is emotionally taxing because when that scene's over, you go straight to the next scene. You do it again. You go straight to the next scene. So there's none of this like get your groove on, warm up, you know, take time in between. It's 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 probably like it's like the Battle of the Somme or something like D Day. It's just like day in day out, just D Day. It's like being it's like the beginning of Save a Private Ryan, you know? <laughs> yeah. And if it's emotional, they, you might actually actually have to do it again if something happens. You know, oh, yeah. so what, what you're saying of being taxing, it might be 10 times as taxing if you had to do it two or three times. So it's less taxing from that point of view, though, because generally you'll hit it right the first time they buy it. But if you do night prime time or movies, you'll do and it's an emotional scene. You might do that take 15, 20 times. So that's no, where that, that medium gets emotionally taxing. But I think the only reason you're doing 15, 20 times, is you haven't actually given the performance yet they need to buy the take. So there's a lot of actors that like to warm up on 10 or so takes and then they give it. We don't have that chance. Wow. It's like, it's like you, here's your shot, get it done. <laughs> wow. Uh, some fans are asking if you can share some memories of Christoph St. John and if you both had the opportunity to work with uh, the legendary Gene Cooper as well. If you can share, right? You do that. I mean, we have a, a plethora of stories with with Christoph St. John. Our our highlights of, of our highlight of every day was was us being in Daniel's room together and waiting for Christoph to burst in the room, and we saw him cut through my my room to get to the soundstage. Yeah, because he has two doors in his dressing room and one goes to the stage. So, but it, we'd call him Hurricane Stuff because he would just burst <laughs> in and and just have all the energy in the world and and share you know a crazy story from either the night or the weekend before. And we just it, it, the the what I remember the most is just how much we laughed, how much we laughed. We'd pull pranks on each other. We'd joke around constantly. Daniel. Daniel put conditioner in his shoes one time. He put Vaseline on his <laughs> before. And <laughs> I mean, well, 
Um, who, who, one, one of the things was funny with Christoph, he'd always be learning his dialogue at the last minute because that was yeah. his style. That way it would kind of feel fresh and new to him. So he'd come in like, will you help me run these scenes? And so I'd start feeding him the wrong lines. <laughs> and I realized that's really like a really uncool thing to do, especially when you know that, you know, this is their chance to get it down and you shouldn't do it, but I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> And there's been a couple of times where he was meant to say one thing. I kept saying something else and he imprinted his mind the wrong way. And he would actually say it during the take and the whole thing just got <laughs> You're like, what did you just say? He's like, got her. <laughs> so I, like, gonna... I, I, I get the blame for it. I was going to ask. So who is the biggest practical joker at Y&R? Probably, probably, probably was staff or either staff or, uh, Josh Morrow, I've heard done some pranks, but I mean, I've been a part of a few stuff ones. St Christoph one time put a fart machine under the witness stand of a in a, in a court set. We had a big court episode where, where Victoria or Drew was on trial for something, and and he'd let it off when oh. you know, these in, these deep intense moments. Um, I'd probably say Christoph was yeah. That's, that's, that's when the show had a sense of humor. But Gina, you, know, you know, for Jeannie, oh, though. Oh, God, he did to Jeannie. Yeah. He, I remember that's one of my first memories of Christoph and Pranks and putting Jeannie in the same same thing. We were at the GCAC, and Christoph put the fart machine underneath the sofa. <laughs> and, and, and Jeannie's talking. He just. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, Jeannie stops. He goes, who's put the fucking fart machine underneath the fucking sofa? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone uh, just lost it. It was so funny. But that is, yeah, that's yeah we, you don't have much time to do pranks on on the show because they they just time is money, yeah. and there's so much volume to get done. Look, and you, you'll tell the producers every which way to Sunday that it, it's good for morale once or twice. It makes the crew and everybody work together, but they they don't care. They, they're not in, they're not in the. Uh, in the in the in the, the fr frivolities games they're, they're in the shoot it and put it in the can game uh many fans are saying how much they miss you and wish you would be back um and they love how the two of you have remained uh friends over the years um who who took you under your their wing there when you first got there was there somebody who helped you learn the ropes for each of you or did you just fly by the seat of your pants? Well, no, for me it was definitely it was definitely a mix of uh, of Christoph and Victoria Rao. Uh, Christoph just uh, allowing me to feel um, again lighthearted and comfortable in the midst of getting used to these you know heavy emotional storylines that I was just thrown into with the amount of you know the volume of, of dialogue and everything. Just it, at first, he was very good at at keeping it light and keeping it fun and and. Uh, and um, letting me know and showing that that he was, you know, proud of 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 my evolution. But Victoria was great because my storyline when I got on was I came on as a I was a foster uh, kid who grew up mm -hmm. in group homes in and out of group homes, and um, that was her real life story. She actually pitched that storyline to the show to even have a foster line a foster care story on the show to have my character come on. So everything that happened to me the first few years happened to her in real life. These were all real, you know, occurrences in her. So she would she would share with me her personal stories and what you know her mindset was going through some of the things that Devon was going through, and really give me a you know a good sense of of how to how to play, um, you know, how to play the scenes and and just what I'd be going through and and yeah, definitely. Hmm. Why, why were you a foster kid? Because my mother was, uh, my father was completely out of the picture. Um, my mother was a, a drug addict. She was, she was, on, she did crack. She was a crack uh, addict and lost custody of me or just what I think that I was taken from her at a certain age and had, then I had to be raised by my grandmother for a few years and then she passed away and then I had no one. So I was put into a... Uh, into group homes. That's, interesting. That's not what Christoph told me. Christoph told me it's because you because Devon was a chronic masturbator. And any room he was in, he would start <laughs> masturbating and no one wanted to keep him around because of that. <laughs> and you and you believed it all these years. <laughs> That's the backstory that I, I kept in my yeah, you soap cr opera. You created have you seen, that. Have you seen right. some of the some of the storylines they've come up with on soap operas? 
if I'm being a chronic masturbator would just probably be like, you know, another storyline. <laughs> yeah, different you know? day of the week. Different, different day, day of the week. week. Different day Next of the week. Time. You, you must have right, right struggles me. with a love for himself <laughs> that only he can fulfill. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and you must have heard though from a lot of uh, foster kids, like the fan reaction to that when you first came on must have been, uh, you know, must have been overwhelming to some degree because there are so many kids in the oh, foster. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I also uh, participated in a few um, events for uh, Victoria Rowell's um, um, foster care program that she has um, during those first few years. But yeah, I mean, I, I would get, you know, I would get some really, really amazing and and heartfelt. Uh, messages from people who've gone through the same thing. Even when I went deaf on the show, I remember you know getting a lot of oh wow, um, yeah. a lot of messages from people. I was out actually one time with with um, with with my ex, and and uh, someone came up to the table and just left a note uh, for me, and it said that they were deaf and they've been watching the show, and you know, and it just not only could they relate, but they they believed it, you know, and it it, it meant a lot to to come on the show. And when I got on. I remember auditioning for the show. I always wondered what are they, they going to do with me? I'm, I'm a kid, and these soap operas are these adult storylines about people sleeping with each other all the time, and you know this and that. But to come on and have a storyline that was that was as important and as um, you know as um, meaningful to a lot of people my age and younger, it it was a great honor to to know that they put that in my hands. She never hmm. did you that when you were actually like saying to Christoph, like, Dad, I love you. You were actually ordering, like, beef and black bean sauce, because... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we, 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 would, we would tell... They had... When I was de when I went deaf on the show, I had a, a sign language coach that would teach us the sign... Or teach them the sign language for the, their lines the morning of. So they were learning, rehearsing dialogue and teaching us... Soap opera works, by the way. Yeah. So we <laughs> would... Uh, film the scene in five minutes, so you guys go and learn, go and learn the, uh, the, the sign, sign language, language in five minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we we'd mess around all the time. I mean, we did. I remember Dan Gra uh, Michael Grazade and I once told Christoph the completely wrong signs for one of some of his lines, and he was like, "Okay, yeah, yeah," because he was late that day. <laughs> we let him do it for rehearsal. But, uh, and for you, Daniel, was there somebody who took you and showed you the ropes when you got there? Yeah, uh, for me, it was Doug Davison and Peter Bergman. Um, because I figured I most will go probably to the most preferred professional person that was, that I, that works in CBS's uh, premises, which is uh, Peter Bergman. Then yeah. I probably thought the next best thing would probably go to go to the guy who's been there the longest, which was Doug Davidson. See, that's that's called like uh, thinking through the problem. <laughs> that, that's your business uh, school training. I'm just back you, I'm just kicking in. One, yeah. the guy who has not been fired yet. <laughs> And the guy who's been here the longest that could get fired, but not yet, but he's still been here the longest. That's that's kind of yeah. the way I look at it. You, and, you, and, and, you, using your brain. Yeah, using the old uh, the old brain. And and, and basically, uh, they both pretty much gave me the same advice, uh, which was uh, turn up, say your lines, um, play the hell out of whatever they give you. Don't question the writers about the dialogue, the lines, just say them. Uh, you're an actor, not a writer. Don't get involved. Um, yeah. You know, typical things professionals say. <laughs> Did you keep it or use it, the advice? Oh, I mean, I used it. I use, look, I use it when it makes sense because I think the reason, reason that Bright and I get on so well is we're very logical. We have the same brain when it comes to logic. You know, I mean, I can argue that one plus one is three, but logically it's not, but you could somehow fool someone to thinking it if you could spin the story the right way. But when I, but for me, when I'm in a position where I need to understand what my character is doing, why my character is saying it, you know, if I'm doing this, there has to be a reason that motivates that happening. And you kind of get to the point sometimes where you go, I just don't understand why I'm doing it. And then if I don't understand it, then I can't play the truth of it. And that just affects the way I feel about my performance. So, I may try and get more clarification about why what's happening is happening and what led to the characters doing it. I mean, so yeah. And, and does this have to do with you liking quantitative mathematics? Yeah, I like, for, I, I like that stuff. Because those of us mathematically challenged, I'm not even sure what that actually means. So if you... Yeah, it, it, it basically <laughs> mean, it means that you can bend math to, to any any whim you want in order to try and solve any problem, which I kind of like because there's there's creativity and 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 uh, 
lateral thinking, but there's still, uh, you know, systematic logical progression of thought, which kind of, you know, goes well hand in hand with the two for me, which is one of the reasons that Brighton and I got on so well, uh, you know, Formula One to us is a very technical sport. It's all about excellence and engineering. And then when we got into, when we decided to build an app, you know, we, we talked for a long time about what was missing with social media. Cause you know, we, we do social media as almost a profession, you know, would I be on social media if I wasn't an actor? Probably not. That's just my get down because, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I'd probably just email friends to family photos. I might be on, I don't know. But we would sit there and say, you know, what do you notice that doesn't work correctly in Twitter or Instagram or Facebook? What, what, how are you being prevented from doing what it is you want to do? And we came up with all the, the things to us were the holes in their platforms. And then we decided to, to build an app that would be a lifestyle app that would truly fix those problems. Um, and we came up with Billboard. Yeah. So, so perfect segue. Talk more like where, like were the two of you sitting down where, you know, looking at different apps, what literally prompted the spark for, for this? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a, a couple different things. One was, was first we, when you are on social media and need to use it for the purposes we need to use it for, we're constantly being asked, how do we find you? What platforms are you on? How do we, you know, if you have something that you're trying to promote, we are an event, it'll have something like this, for example, um, you know, a, a chat or an event that we'll be going to out of town, you know, how there's so many different ones now people have, we have our Facebook, you have Snapchat, you have Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn, everything. We wanted to first create a, a place where you can, you can have one, almost like a digital, you know, business card of your identity where everything can be in one place. So you don't have to send people to, you know, five different locations to hopefully see what you're trying to promote and get out there. Um, and then the other thing that we wanted to do was, was, was try to create a, a new way of, of finding people that were finding like minds. Because we, you know, meeting a lot of different, I know Daniel said this many times before, when, when it, we travel around and meet a lot of different soap fans, we might find people in certain cities who, you know, are fans of, of Victor Newman and, and, you know, Kane Ashby, and they, they are also fans of, um, you know, characters on another soap, but they don't have a way to really meet and interact with each other and find commonalities. And we wanted to create something that was, that made it easy. Um, and I let you put the control in your hands because a lot of a lot of apps where you where you find like minds and match make they tell you what kind of filters you need to use they tell you the kind of things that you need to put in there to to you know do you like to go out and drink smoke dance nights out you know walks on the <clears> beach <throat> like that but we want to put the control back into people's hands where they can create their filters they can create their things that they their specific things that they want to find that someone else may have as well. Um, <laughs> And what works so well there is we sat around and said, so what's a commonality that everybody would have? What's a system we can come up with? Because as Brighton's saying, if you sign up for really any uh, matchmaking app or any app that's for fan groups or whatever, the last question's like, you know, what's your favorite show? What's this? What's this? What's that? If it is always uh, a set limit as to how outside the box you can define yourself. So we said, you know, hashtags are pretty much a universal thing now. We went on Instagram and we like Brighton put in like uh, underwater basket weaving. I said, there's no one going to be doing underwater basket weaving. And there was like a thousand plus people, you know, <laughs> and then you put in one for like summer. It's got 1.2 billion. Then you'd put in Eric Braden. There might be like, you know, 10,000, 12,000. Then you put in Maurice Bernard. There might be like 8,000, 9,000, whatever. So the question is on Instagram, you're only allowed to put in one hashtag and that will give you a list of everybody who's posted that hashtag. And we looked and we looked and we looked and there was nothing that would let you go, okay, I'm a hashtag Victor Newman, hashtag Maurice Bernard, hashtag the locker room, hashtag, hashtag the Dallas Cowboys, hashtag baking chocolate chip cookies. And then anyone in the world who has put those hashtags in any combination into their billboard, you can add up to 50 hashtags for free. The app's free, by the way. Um, and if you click billboard.com, you'll see the website. It'll show what it looks like at the bottom. You scroll down, there's the links for the app store and the Google Play store. 
where it is right now. And the goal for us was to say, how do we bring people together? Because I always used to say to Brighton, there's got to be someone somewhere on the planet that I've never met. I go, oh, my God, that person is like my twin. So mm-hmm. if I had like 50 hashtags and I put in all the things that define me that I'm into and what I'm looking for, and then I press discover. Anyone using those hashtags, we mathematically break down to percentage of matchability. So if you if you had two hashtags in there, Alan, and one was hashtag the locker room and hashtag YR, and I all I have was hashtag YR, I'd be a 50% match to you. So I go, oh, we have I'm 50% in common with this guy. Let me check him out. Oh, he's a so guy too. Next thing you know, I network with you. And it's about allowing Love people that. to find anyone in the same thing as them. So you go to billboard.com, have a look. It shows you the screen captures how the app works, what it does. Scroll down, download it, set your account. The other thing we came across too was that I have, and Brighton has experienced a lot of people who would take our images and create fake profiles. Uh, I, I got it. that. By you, you know, by promoting this, I saw like a response that I got. Mm. Right. You, you'll see people that will take my photo with my kids yeah. and me and they'll make up a fake name. And then yeah. they literally troll women on Facebook. They get them onto other platforms. And then over months, they just basically say, oh, the kids got sick and I need money. And, and I've had, when I say dozens, I do not exaggerate. Dozens of of, of, of predominantly ladies from Europe and Canada and the US, but predominantly uh, Italian, French and Spanish that have been conned into believing that this is a a real person they're talking to. And they've tracked it back to different parts of the world where, because I have to get bank accounts and things where they realize, and they've given away tens of thousands of dollars, which is just horrible. So I say to Brighton, I said, how do we fix that? And I realized the only way to fix it is that everyone takes a verified video, which is a five second video clip of your face, just reacting whatever when you set up your account. We inspect it, we match it to a photograph that you have that you posted, and we say that's the real person. We give you a black check mark. Oh, so, so when you sign up, it's yeah, you have to literally take that live video. Right. You don't have to yeah. take the live video. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But what we're saying to people is if you want to know the person you're talking to really is the person yeah. they claim they, they, they're claiming to be. You yeah. come on a billboard, you can take this verified video. We'll get, we inspect it manually. We run the, the production team does it. We, within 24, 48 hours, we get back and we, we verify it. If anyone who matches with you can go to your billboard, they know you're the person you claim you are. They scroll down, they can see your Instagram, your Twitter, your Snapchat, your personal website, whatever it is you have. And then they'll see how they match with you with, with a hashtag. So it brings everyone together in a way that we want to make sure people were protected from being scammed. We're able to find anyone in the world in the same things as they are and also be able to put all their social media in one place. So when you find someone, you can look into their different you social can media. Find them. That, I mean, that's a really smart idea. I, I follow a independent musical artist who is, I mean, he's a good looking guy, a gay guy who's shirtless all the time. So people are always making fake accounts. And he's right. always he's always posting, you know, the fake account saying this isn't me. Don't get right. scammed. Don't yeah, get right. scammed. It's shocking to think, you know, smart. Good for you guys right. to do that. That Instagram and Facebook don't do things like that to verify right. that, you know. So, so when people say that to us, what we say is, well, I'll tell you what, create a billboard account, and then you attach your Facebook to it, or you attach what other platforms you have. And when people say, hey, how do you find me? What do you do now? As Brighton was saying, I say, oh, I'm, well, look for me on Instagram because on Instagram, I'm the Daniel Goddard because Daniel Goddard was taken. So I either had to do Mr. Official was taken, Mr. was taken. So I went with the, okay. Or real, real was taken too, I think. So, so I just went with the. On Twitter, I'm Daniel Goddard because I got it back in 2009. On Facebook, I'm official Daniel Goddard. So I have three different usernames. Mm-hmm. So the question is, what do you tell someone? So mm-hmm. if you right. put everything in one place and say, oh, I'm on Billboard. So I go to Billboard. I search for me. I, if I if I attach or anyone who's on Twitter and is a public profile with a blue check mark, they instantly when they attach their Twitter, we verify it with the public. So if Snoop or The Rock turn up, you know it's their real one. Mm-hmm. If not, you do your verified video, and when somebody finds you, they go, "It's really you." They can see all of your platforms at one place, and you get to see what you actually have in common. You might have ninety percent in common with someone you didn't even know it, and you connect with them. They'll see that and they'll go, "Oh my gosh." whether you're at a convention 
or whether you're uh, you're going to college for the first day, you know, you're going to a new middle school because the app's 13 plus. So you, let's say you go to a new middle school the first day and you don't know anybody there. You could put all the things you're into, all the games, all the sports, all the hobbies. And then if there's anyone there, it'll let you know. And it'll say, here's this person, they'll match up. Because Brian's about to tell you about the augmented reality feature. Oh, that but, that's, but that's great for, you know, you know, there's a lot of kids out there who have trouble meeting people. Absolutely. You know, young kids who, you know, are a little more, like a little, a little yeah. more of a loner. Yeah, you know, really. Uh -huh. Um, genius. Um, I know we were going to do the show back in June. It launched in June or, or right around May? May no, or yeah, June? what we did, we soft launched uh, around May. And the soft launch was basically bringing everybody on to help us beta the app. And, and you know, we have thousands of people on it right now. And it's been one of those experiences that's allowed us to find the problems in the app, the usability problems, the coding problems. And then we went back into a complete remodel rebuild with a different team. Um, and we have a version today that's in the app store that has the percentage matches on it. So literally sign up and, and, and the user flow when you sign up now is great because we ask you a couple of questions that hashtag questions, and then you can go in and add your own hashtags. But everyone, if you're watching this and, and when you, when you see this on Facebook or, you, or, or Twitter, wherever, ask yourself how you're really finding the people that are just like you. And most of you will go, I, I join a Facebook group or I go and join a, mm -hmm. a group that's on Twitter. Well, have a look at Billboard and you're gonna find that there's a lot of people, including we have about 15 maybe members of YNR on it as well. There's a lot of people starting to say, I now have the control and it's easy to find everybody that, I'm, that I wanna get to meet. So try it out, it, it's worth it, it's free. And uh, I think you'll truly enjoy the experience. That's it's awesome. Um, and you know, I, I think of just even this. I, I told Brian I started this in April bec uh, because of the pandemic. I wasn't right. something I was setting out to do. But just even this, like I can see all the comments, and you know, it brings people together just here. Like this, this right. is a right. day, you know, especially the daytime community. They, you know, but like you know, there's people who you know watched you on Beastmaster. There's people who watched you on Family Matters. You know, it's all That's all of it brings us together well, that's absolutely great so it's, it's funny we, we were talking to shamar about that and one of the things i was saying to brighton is that works well for shamar is you know shamar was on young and the restless so he had a hate uh hashtag yr then he was on criminal minds he was also on soul train hashtag soul train then he's on criminal minds hashtag criminal minds then he's on swat hashtag roll swat okay let's say that's the, the four hashtags he would have if he wanted to be able to bring his base together you put all those hashtags in and when you search for Shamar, all of a sudden you'll find people that may have only hashtag criminal minds and hashtag uh, roll SWAT and they didn't know he was on why not. So they can then meet and you can have this, we've set the messaging up because the other thing that we realized, which was our biggest problem we came across is that when you post anything on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and you don't pay to boost it, the algorithm will only let 10% of your followers even be exposed to the chance to see it. And then that depends yeah. on who, who generally looks at your stuff the most. So that's why you'll see someone like say Shamar again would have like 2.3 million followers on, on Instagram. And when he looks, you see how many people see his posts, it's only a couple hundred thousand because they want to make you pay to boost it because they're a content posting app. What we want to do is say, okay, how do we allow everyone that follows you? Because it makes no sense to me. If somebody's, uh, you got 100,000 people following you on Twitter or 100,000 people on Instagram or a million, you should be mm -hmm. able to put out a post that everybody sees because they're following you. So we set our messaging system up in a way that everyone you're connected to on Billboard, you can say, all right, I want to go select all, send my message out. So Shamar would be like, hey, everyone, uh, I'm, I'm doing a YR event this day. He does only hashtag YNR. And that only goes to them. Or you can do all three hashtags and they can go out to everybody, but he can message literally 1 million people as an individual message. It's not a mass message. Yeah. yeah. All at once. Because right now on Twitter and Instagram and, and Facebook, the, the most you can have in a group message is 30. And they're doing that because they want you to post content. But the thing also is when you send that group message of 30 out, every time someone replies, you go in the message string and you get a thing called message fatigue. And then you leave the group. So what right. we're, proposed, we're, we're proposing, look at it a different way. You can have 30 people that are all under the same thing as you and then go to highlight all 30 people 
and then just write one message and send it. And that message will go out to each person individually and you can have individual conversations and spawn by the, the same thing in common and then they can go off their own direction. So the experience of meeting people is even heightened. You're not all on the same level yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Not, what, what was the hardest part putting this together? Ooh. <laughs> the hardest part? Getting up in the morning and, and going and every day realizing that we're working. I don't mean to cut you off here, B, but uh, we built we built this overseas. So yeah. it's being on a time time frame. Like I'm on Ukraine and Israel time at the moment. Uh, and before that, when we were on Wiles at Wynar, we were on India time. So it, it's you're constantly in a, in, a, in a flux state of trying to operate on developer time when you're building overseas. Uh, that's that that was an issue there. And then Brian, what do you think yeah, about that? That would be that would be pretty much it. Just just perfecting it, perfecting it, getting yeah. out all the little tweaks and bugs and ironing out exactly what we think people would want and, and right. how they use it. Um but we we have something uh we we can't we can we can tease what's what's we have yeah, tease. tease go go crazy. So we have something really cool coming with the app too. Um, when we say cool, it's a first, it's a world it, first. It, it's it, this hasn't I'm, been most before. people can't, awesome. can't say it, That's it, awesome. is, yeah so we we are about to a world exclusive on the locker room thank you on the locker room <laughs> I, 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 when, I, when i say this to you when i say it's a world first it is a world first because the tech doesn't exist because we have the patent on the tech because the israelis who built this tech are all ex-military so basically we created the tech with our part one of our uh, augmented reality partner uh fabric um ar and Brighton, go. Well, we're 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 integrating, uh, as Daniel said, augmented reality into the app. So, when you are in any public setting or public gathering, if you're at the beach, if you're at a music festival, if you're at a theme park, or just at the mall, anywhere, um, and you want to be discovered, if you because right now, I mean, we we also talked about this when we first started building the app was was just a general way of meeting people and meeting strangers and know who they are right now if you're in a bar or in a club or anywhere like i just mentioned you want to know who that person is standing over there what are your options your options are to go over and and intervene in their life. Yeah. Well, let's say you go to the YNR fan event or the gh fan event a thousand people turn up they don't yeah. know who they who they the commonalities of everybody just by being in the same room and so so with with ar and billboard you're going to be able to activate AR mode, hold your camera up, and as you scan any area within a half mile of yourself, uh, you're gonna be able to see other live billboards in AR if they choose to be... Um, uh, if they have it turned on. on. If they have, if it, they turned have it turned on. on. We, have, we have incredible privacy. We have, we have incredible privacy. Let me tell you, we have privacy where if you don't wanna be seen, you will not be seen. You can be chosen, be seen by everyone, chosen, be seen by only people that you match with, you have a commonality, or mm -hmm. only by people you're connected to. So you can even do it if you're a family going to Disneyland, you're only connected, to, you have a family hashtag for Disneyland, that's all you want to match with, and wherever the family goes, within half a mile, you can scan around and go, oh, they're over there. The, the use exactly for are incredible, yeah. But you'll see their billboards appear in AR, you'll be able to touch their billboard profiles, open it up, browse their social media they've added to their billboard, connect with them, chat with them. Um, and again, like Daniel said, it's, this is, this is the first, and especially in a time now with, 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 uh, and the way COVID. social distancing and COVID has, right. has changed the way people are, you know, comfortable with interacting with each other. You know, when colleges open back up, imagine your first day of college going and wanting to, you know, find people with commonalities, but being able to hold your phone up and scan around and seeing the people who want to be found and want to be discovered. And, uh, want to be matched with i mean you could literally put in hashtag yr and you have that as one of your hashtags and if you go to the mall or you go anywhere you could just scan the mall anyone who has hashtag yr if they have it turned on will in all been a reality you'll see their billboard because you basically just turn on your cameras if you have your camera normally like you're taking a video and all you do is just look in the app and you'll see the the, the live billboard billboards in real in real time and then once Very again, clever. Like, yeah, thank you. It, it's, it's what we've always wanted to do because, like, I remember going to college, and let me tell you, Brighton and I had a very different schooling because he was a child actor. And he went through the uh, studio school system, <laughs> and he lives to tell the tale. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 did have a first, I did have a first day of college down in Orange County, though. I did. 
And it was, was the it, when you say first day, you mean that was it? Yeah, just my one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> Turned around. He, yeah. he, he, he got he got some part and he left. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, you know what it's like. You, you imagine you're in high school. Yeah. You, you know, and, and, and I always say that because, like, I have kids now, in, in uh, my oldest son's in middle school and my lo- youngest one's going to lower school into, into sixth grade. And, you know, you're in this position where you don't know anyone around when you go to a new school. You could all have the same billboard app. You put all the hashtags of your sports, your hobbies, whatever you're into, whatever TV shows, whatever games. And then just press the augmented reality button and then just scan and you will see all the kids around you that have the same things in common as you with a percentage on it. 70%, 80%, 40%, 20%. And you can then literally just walk straight up to that person and say, hey, or you press connect and they'll get a notification that you're connecting with them and they can look at you and then you can be like, walk up and be like, hey, we have so it's much It's a really more there. interesting way to meet people. I mean, because, you know. We, well, it's the way of the future. <laughs> We all it, want it, to meet somebody with a common, you right. know, common like, you yeah. know, we, we all like on all these apps, you're hit like. Absolutely. But, but Ellen, it know. is the way of the future, because it, why yeah. would you, why would you put yourself in a position now where you have to go to a conference or go to a place where, you know, you don't know anybody and literally just walk around. Hi, I'm, I'm Daniel. Nice to meet you. What do you like? That's the wrong person. Next one. Hi, I'm so-and-so. Your time is money. If you can take mm-hmm. something that normally takes you five weeks, if it's a new school, and condense that down to two days or a day, who doesn't want to go to school or a new job or a conference or a fan club or anywhere on the and, and find everyone there you can sit at the table with, have a great time, you know you have the same sports, same music, same show, same hobbies, all in common. And, you, and it's you, like you've known each other all these years. Who, who doesn't want that? You technically sure. never have to stranger again. yeah you, you never have to be yeah. a stranger again but once again you have the ability to turn on your How privacy modes where people can't see it right you're breaking up yeah there. right yeah you were breaking up um valerie one of our fans had messaged me she lives in france she uh said she was mm-hmm. unable to access it is it available overseas yes it is it's available it's available what maybe uh yeah. is she on uh, I'll tell you what have her I don't know if she's on Android or Apple or iPhone. Uh, try it again, Val. Go to billboard.com, swipe down, and press the link you're on. Um, there is a chance the Google link may be a US-based link, but I know the iPhone is global. So all I can say, search for it in your app store. Billboard. Look it up. B-I-L-D-B-O-R-D in your app store. It's there. Great. Yeah. Um, were, were you both uh, business mind? Because I know... Daniel, you're you're definitely a business minded. Brighton, were you as well? Like business, something you've always been interested in? No, actually. Uh, aside from anything in in entertainment, I I for a second thought that that being a a, a psychologist would be an interesting path to go down or, or something along you know in that area. But business wise, I no, I never really, I never really. Um, you know, I, I never really. You know, thought. it's so funny. So many yeah. actors that I've had on this mm-hmm. have studied psychology. I don't know what it is about actors who want to well, just know know the psyche. It, it's well, interesting. I, well, I didn't. Yeah, and I and I I didn't even get into studying it. I just I, I I've I enjoy helping people with with issues. I enjoy talking through you That's know great. problems with people, and I, I as as logical as my mind is, I, I think I have a knack for it, but. When it comes to this stuff, no, I just I think both Daniel and I are constantly looking at the world, seeing what how it could improve. You're always looking at anything, saying how could this be better? How can we evolve mm-hmm. it? And what would we want in our own lives? Mm-hmm. And this is really where something like this came from. And and he and I talked about it enough that we said, well, let's not waste our time anymore. Are there things you've learned from each other? He's like the other half of my brain <laughs> yeah, that I did. I didn't need billboard to find <laughs> it's, 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 it's ridiculous. And what's so ridiculous about it is because we, we've worked so closely over the years uh, on multiple projects and, and in Y&R, just conversation that literally you, I can say to Bryden, we could be in the middle of trying to figure something out. It could be so unrelated to what we're talking about. And say, you know, that thing we couldn't do. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, you know what we should do? He goes, why don't we do that? And I go, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> 
Our minds are literally yeah. like that. It's really, it's really <laughs> freaky. It's like a twin thing almost. It's bizarre. But um, you know what? It, it's true because like I have an engineering brain. I always have. I can look at anything and disassemble it in my head. Then I can disassemble it. Like I used to take the TV apart when I was a kid. I was that kid. <laughs> and I put it back together. <laughs> but for some reason, I chose to be an actor. I think it's because I just like pulling so many different things apart. Like I didn't want to be just like one thing. So I thought I could do a m- bunch of different things. And acting would give me that. But I think it's led me to this position so I could be here and do what I've done now. I truly do believe that. Um, I'm a big I, – I've, as I've got – older and along the path of life, I've become a big believer in almost God's will, you know, and I'm not speaking from a religious perspective. I'm speaking from a, everything happens for a reason and we can try and bend everything to our will if we want. And we can't, you know, me leaving YNR was, was, was the, was the, was the, the, the lever that helped the fulcrum and, and the big boulder of realization start rolling is because, you know, I, I could not have given any more of myself. So that was outside of my, my, my control. And it led me now to be in the position where I'm doing this because I really do see that I want to bring people together. The amount of people that Bright and I have met in our life, we've talked to, they go, oh my God, because of family matters, because of Beastmaster, because of Young and the Restless, you've got me through these hard times or I've met these friends, like groups like Havan and Hamanda and yeah. Levon, all of Brighton's things. You have these groups that become friends because of that. So we thought, how do we bring these people together? And with the world, and, um, in, in the state of the world. I mean, I, I'm seeing this in a small way just from this, just people yeah. who were, you know, people were home during quarantine. This is why, you know, I, I started right. this. Um, speaking of quarantine, what did you learn about yourselves during quarantine? Did you learn anything about yourself during it? Oh, no, no, I understood the question. I was just trying to think how many things can I tell you in, in the space of time. And I don't want to keep talking. <laughs> like speak. What did I learn about myself? Well, I, you know, everybody I talk to that uh, they, most of them all say it's been difficult for them and it has not been, it's been the opposite for me. Cause I enjoy having an excuse to be home and yeah. work on the things that I want to work on. And so it's given us, it's given us time. It's given us a lot of time, valuable time to, to bring this, you know, to where it's at. And I, I think I've, uh, I've learned that I can, I can, uh, in a healthy way, deal with just about anything uh, life throws at us. <laughs> mm-hmm. You, Daniel? Yeah. Oh. Um, well, I've got kids. Um, so what's interesting about I was going to ask you, are you homeschooling? During, they, on, you they, to... online, they online school. Okay. They're, they're on online school right now. Um, it, it's given me a complete understanding of... Uh, the value of family because you know you're always scrambling you know you're always rushing somewhere rushing there rushing to pick them up rushing to go to work rushing to this rush 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 and it's almost like it was it, it's a horribly sad and tragic event that covid hit the world but it's almost been like winter you know i look at i, I there's you look at the seasons and the most growth comes from places where there are four se- where there's uh, two seasons, hot and cold, wet and dry. And you look at the equatorial areas, and basically this COVID is almost like a, a, a period of winter where it's forced everyone to, to self-evaluate, um, spend time with loved ones, talk about psychology, deal with being alone. Like a lot of people were quarantined. You know, or oh, wow. they, what, yeah. what was it called? Forced stay. What were those? What, that some term they they coined it. Um, alone, and and it didn't do well for a lot of people. And I think that uh, it's made humanity as a whole understand itself better. I believe. And mm-hmm. therefore, I always take the positive from anything. You know, and that's that to me is giving me the chance to say to Brighton, listen, when COVID's over, you do realize what we've created now has a great social purpose. You know, the ability that people are going to be terrified to go up to anybody and like talk to them. You can be within half a mile or a quarter of a mile. We have two toggles on it. And look for something, look for someone and just literally go, that's them there and then go up and talk at the social distance. I mean, because people still have to go and interact. They still have to be able to go and meet new people. And at a time when the world is focusing so much on our differences. I mean, I feel like every day it's just gap between people is growing. And you know how different yeah. we really are. It's being right. the, con- the country's being divided more and more. Right. But and this, this is an opportunity to bring people back together. 
It's a tool to find out what am I having in common with someone that I would never think I have something in common with. You can look, look at somebody and judge them by their cover and think there's not a, no chance in hell that I have something in common with right. them. Right. Right. This much. You know, it's funny. It, it's it Brighton's so true, and that's one of the things that we talked about a lot is that you could, like you could have someone of a completely different race, creed, color, religion. You can have three things that you don't agree upon. Let's say it's religion, uh, politics, and whether, I don't know, the New York Giants are a good sports team. Who knows? But let's say the other two. You can have a hundred other things you do have in common, and you would never even know because you couldn't get past the two things mm -hmm. that, to, for some reason, shouldn't have even confused your ability to, to, to meet this person, but you couldn't. And now... You can do that. There's no no color, no race, no creed out there. There's just people who are into this. They love this. They want to be this. They believe in this. You know. Well, and you you guys come from a great place. I mean, because television, you know, entertainment brings people together for sure. You right. know, and 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 soaps especially more so than any other because of the, you know, you're in their living rooms. Five okay. days a week. So you, you, right, every day, you, you start from a really unique place. Um, that, that's great. I'm going to check it out when we're off the air. Um, Make I your profile, ask, create your profile, add your stuff. And then what we'll do is we'll add it, we'll, I'll post it on my Facebook and, and add it on the social that you're now on Billboard as well. And let's get a, oh, okay. we can do a, we can hashtag, hashtag the locker room. Everyone can, we can do a nice little bring together and unite some people over this. That'd be great. I mean, I feel like we do that. So um, I, I need to ask you both about the two shows that you've mentioned numerous times, uh, Family Matters. People were asking a lot, what, what was that experience like for you, Brighton and, and Jaleel White? It was, with uh, uh, it, it, it was, I mean, I, I was so, I was three and a half when I started the show. Wow. And uh, it's crazy. This is where my, crazy. My, my ability I can't to, even imagine. <laughs> it's where my ability to memorize lines came from because I was I couldn't read yet. And uh, my mom would would take the time to to go through every line in every scene that I was in. So I, I had to memorize I memorized every word of every scene I was in so I knew when to speak. Uh, and that just became a habit for me. So I wouldn't just learn my lines, I learn everyone's. And then you know, you do that for long enough, you're gonna get good at, at anything. Um, but I, at that age, I did. I thought up until probably in the first couple of years, I thought it was something that everybody did. I didn't really understand why people would start coming up to me and recognizing me. And, and you know, I it was just I thought everybody did it. I didn't know it was a job, and I I enjoyed it. There wasn't one second um, during during my time on that show growing up that I didn't feel like rehearsing, didn't feel like learning the lines, didn't feel like going or being there. I truly loved every moment of it, and I'm I'm so happy that I was like that because I know my parents were the type of parents that if they saw any, any kind of, uh, mm. you know, negative energy from me in regards to it, they would have stopped me from doing it. Cause they, they couldn't have cared less of me being famous or on TV or anything like that. Um, but it was just, it was a fun experience. I had nothing but fun. I, I you know, I learned how to play baseball and, and ride a bike and things like that on a, on the Warner brothers lot. And, uh, you know, got to, got to travel and, be a part of a lot of different, you know, um, charity organizations and get to do a lot of things and meet a lot of great people because of it at a very young age um, and uh, and learn a lot. All the, the cast was great. I mean, the, it was like a family. We had our 30, no, 20 year, 20 year reunion from the last episode just a couple of years ago. Um, uh, and uh, we did a big photo shoot in a day of doing interviews together and we hadn't seen each other since the very last episode back in 1998 wow. or 99. And um, it was like a family. It really was like a family. I know that sounds cliche, but we, it felt like we never left each other. And, and um, it, I, I'm, I'm just very, uh, I was, I'm very lucky to have had that type of experience. Cause so it's, it's like you walked out to the living room set into the kitchen set to get a glass of water. And when you walk back in, you went, Oh my God, you people got old. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I, probably, I think I probably made the most drastic change of anybody else on the show. Look, you know, obviously. 
It's my age. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know, it's funny about Brighton with his memorizing is it, it's true and it, it irks everybody. and it, it gives Crystal great pleasure in like really just digging it in when you're on a scene, on, doing a scene and someone forgets a line, she'll turn and go, Brighton, will you just give him the line? You know, because he knows everybody. <laughs> oh, he doesn't lines. just know his. No, he, knows, he learns everybody. Yeah. Wow. And it's, and it's effortless. It's effortless. It's, it's so annoying. He'll sit in the room while people are writing lines. And he'll be doing something on his phone or whatever he's dicking around doing. And then <laughs> I know what you're going to say. And then someone forgets a line. And we're sitting there going, and then you hear Brighton go, uh, it's like, no, I don't love you anymore. Uh, don't call me again. It's just I'm like, sick. shut up. Just shut up. I don't even just, try. Literally just, it's like. <laughs> so, it, so if a fan came up to you on the street and remembered a scene, would you possibly remember a line? There's a good chance I would. Wow. A good chance. <laughs> that, that's it's, insanity. It's so annoying. It's, it's, annoying. it's, just, it's just annoying. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's annoying. It's like someone who's really good at something that you're trying <laughs> to perfect. And it is good. It's just like. I'm glad I'm not working with it anymore. I'm not annoyed as much. <laughs> like, seriously. Well, now, now you got to talk about the experience on Beastmaster. What was that like for you? Oh, that was cool. Uh, you know, it's it's like whenever you're, whenever you're in the middle of something like that, with like because you know Brighton was on Family Matters, which was an ensemble, and Beastmaster was kind of like folks are my character, so. I had so much to do uh, time-wise. Like I had to learn to work with the animals. I had to learn to do all the martial art stunt stuff. I had to like, you know, um, do just, I was involved in so many different aspects of it that the moment the sun came up in, in Queensland, Australia is where we were shooting. The moment it came up, we yeah. had to be rolling. You had to be rolling. And then the moment the sun went down, they try and light it as much as they could if you're in the jungle you would keep shooting. So if it was dark, you had to get everything in your life done, sleep, eat, anything. And then, because otherwise you're fully going. So for me, I really was so obsessed with making it the best it could be that I couldn't enjoy the experience to the extent that in hindsight, looking back at it, I realized how truly, how truly incredible it was. Cause you're like, hmm. you know, there's so much going on that you're constantly just trying to make it great. Trying to hope it, it's great that, Maybe now I'd go with the flow a little bit more. I don't know, but hmm. I don't know. But it was an incredible experience, incredible experience. I mean, to have those animals and be face to face with tigers and have eagles fly and land on your arm and didn't you? And, and, and Mike, one time. What's that? Didn't they have to dump bugs on you one time? Like oh god, I, I've had everything. There was this once uh, in, in the episode where you find out how I become the beast master. They have to, uh, you know, they come up to me and they go, "Do you want to?" Um, uh, they have did this body. We're looking at. We need to do a body mold. I'm like, what for? And they said, well, we have this uh, episode coming up where we find out how you become the Beastmaster. I'm like, okay. So we need a body mold for. They go, well, what we, what happens is you get torn apart by the animals, uh, and then this forest spirit puts you back together, like lays you all together, and then you have to spend two days in this hut that you have to build, this yurt, and if you move you will die if you don't you can become the beast master because this forest spirit will do the thing i'm like okay what's so hard about that they said well basically we're gonna have to cover you in this like steps you know it's like ants cockroaches rats spiders <laughs> snakes uh worms caterpillars different things, scorpions i'm like oh that's okay and they go no no it's gonna be like the whole day you're gonna lay there and and then we're gonna like cover you and then we have to clean you up and do it again, do it again. I'm like, oh, that might suck. Anyway, so my stunt, my stunt double said, uh, he goes, he didn't want to do it. He said, I'm not doing that. So I'm like, oh, fuck, I got it. Sorry. I, oh, I have to do it. So I thought I'll do it because it'll be like this incredible mental exercise. And I remember laying there, staring at the top of the earth. And you hear them go, uh, bring in the cockroaches. And they come in with like a trash can. Um, I'm like, and you lay there and then they clean you up and then they have to have like bites so then they'll cover you in all these like bites and they use like cherry sauce for it and then they go bring in the uh spiders and then they put the spiders on you and then but they'd have different things with like the sauce and i'm laying there going don't move don't move i can't blink can't do anything and then the, the, the most bizarre thing about all of it was i'm gonna get itchy <laughs> 
Oh, it was under the rats. The rats would go under under here. They had snakes under here, and and, and everything. I got I got a snake going up my loincloth, and uh, right. is that a, your loin, loincloth? He was happy to see me. Um, <laughs> and by the end of it, they so they're done. They clean me up. We're finished. Everybody packs up leaves. I'm just laying there. I go, oh my god, this is like doing really bad, like porn, probably. <laughs> like the show's over, everybody's gone, and you're just laying there, like, hey fellas. <laughs> <laughs> did, you forget, did you forget me? Did you forget me? Yeah, it was like just. <laughs> did you I'm just like, become okay. an? Amer did you just become an American citizen? In June? Yeah, after, yeah, after, after twenty two years, I, I finally became an American citizen. How does that feel? It feels great. It feels great. I've always wanted to be an American citizen, uh, but I couldn't have dual citizenship because my Australian. I have to give it up, and um, and I, I couldn't. I couldn't do that uh, because of. Uh, legal issues uh with, with like business and stuff in australia so long story short is i could finally do it and then um my kids are american and i decided i want to do it so i can plead the fifth you can't plead, <laughs> you can't plead the fifth if you're not an american citizen <laughs> i guess not just ask, I guess ask, not. Me a, ask me a question i haven't done yet just ask me any question i'll go <laughs> are Where any you? of your you said you had two kids are they uh Gonna follow in dad's footsteps, you think? Uh, I, I plead the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> and and Brian, you're you're back at work, right? Finally. I am. I am. Yeah, we've been back for for a little while now, and uh, but we're going we're going full steam. It's been nice. I and, missed it. Uh, you just found out. Uh, what did you just find out about your? Your ex-wife. Sorry, I wrote it down. Um, I just found out that my ex-wife, uh, my deceased ex-wife, had a twin sister who is uh, is now uh, on the show. Her <laughs> Amanda, and uh, yeah, I've been uh, I've been yep. helping her get to know, to share stories about what her sister was like because I'm the only one that really knew her that well in town. And then my girlfriend on the show. He's also my girlfriend in real life. She's her character is uh, having a hard time with me spending the you know with, with me. Uh, what what's that like doing it on on set and offset? It's uh, it's it's great, especially now because we're we're literally the only two people in uh, in <laughs> can, kiss. can uh, kiss or be within six feet of each other. So yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! They must love the two of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. That's so it funny. Is. Do you guys have plans to uh, create anything else? Do you talk about other things you want to do like that? Daniel like billboard. I? Yeah, Daniel well, and you. I mean, we've we've, oh. we've been, uh, yeah we we're we've been creating uh, entertainment content for how many years now? We've been writing. We've started as writing projects. Nine, nine, nine years, probably. Yeah. So we've uh, we have a few projects in the works um, for film and television. That. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But Billboard is, is at the moment. It's 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 that's for me. It's, it, yeah. It's 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 my it's my. I really do feel this, and it may be a cliche, is that I brought people together while I was on Why Not, but I think I can bring more people together on with Billboard. And, and for me now, as a dad, you know, with, with two boys, I don't like separation. I don't like family separation. I don't like cultural separation. I don't like, I don't like it. I think division is, is an issue. And, and I, I, I want to help people who realize at the end of the day, share, oh, I, can't, I don't like to swear, shiver. I have so much in common with that person. I never would have known that. You know, never we're would have all, We're that. all alike. We all are equal. But it's okay we to be all... different. But here's the thing, though, Alan. It's o it's okay to be different. Oh, yeah. And that's the For thing. Sure. Is that this equality, you can't ram equality down everybody's throat saying, we're all equal, we're all equal. It's okay to be different. It's okay to notice somebody's differences. But yeah. apart from those differences, it might be four out of 100 things. That's only four things. And you have 96 that you're so just similar that you know it's 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 why would those four those few ones override everything else 
And, and right. the goal is to let people have that opportunity to see that as one of the functions of what we do. That is for us, it can bring so much unity. Well, that's great. I hope everybody checks it out. I'm gonna Thank you. Um, I'm gonna put you guys backstage so I can I'll sign up and I'll send you uh, my email and we can connect that so that you know we can get people who watch the locker room to uh, to join. That's okay. Fantastic. But, Thank, thank you both so much. This was you so got. Hey, I don't have to pretend backstage. I like Brighton still, right? Back there, I can just be. Yeah, you, you you can you can tell them off. You okay. can totally tell All them right. off. I hope everybody enjoyed the show today and <laughs> check out definitely check out the app. I will see you all tomorrow. We have Guiding Light, Krista Tesro, and Mark Lewis. Have a great day, everybody.